Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Kevin Geary. I'm the creator of Automatic CSS and Frames. And in this video, I wanna take a look at a brand new frame, Image Group Echo. I wanna give you an example of how Image Group Echo can be used in your layouts. And I wanna show you some of the features that make it very easy to change and manipulate. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And I'm gonna start by adding a new frame. We're just gonna add a hero frame. So I'm gonna to go to the heroes section right here. And I am going to add Hero Oscar. And one thing you're going to notice is that Hero Oscar already has an image group inside of it. It is not image group Echo. It is another image group called image group Delta. And this is what's really good about frames. It is modular in nature. So if you like this general layout of this hero, but you just want a different image group, then all you have to do is remove image group Delta and we can go back up to our templates. And now we can select image group Echo, which is our new frame. So I'm gonna hit insert there. And then I'm just gonna go ahead inside of Hero Oscar, I'm gonna add another container for this frame. It doesn't come with a container itself because it's a modular frame. It could be used anywhere and in any situation. So I'm just gonna add a container for it right there. And then I'm going to drag it into that container. And now you see that I have exactly what I was looking for. I have the same basic hero layout, but now I'm using image group echo instead of image group delta. I'm gonna go ahead and save my work there. And we're just gonna quickly style this up. So in this section for the background, I'm gonna add a gradient. And I am going to say that this is a background gradient. I'm gonna add two colors. Color one is gonna be base, uh, let's say, well, let me go to my base palette here. So I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna choose base, and I'm gonna choose uh, base ultra light. And then my second color, I'm going to again choose my base palette, and then I'm gonna choose light. All right, so we're gonna get a little bit of a gradient effect, and maybe I wanna flip-flop those, I'm not sure. I think I do, I think I wanna flip-flop those. So I have my kind of my darker color up here fading into my lighter color down below. The next thing I wanna do is I want to add a shape divider. So I'm gonna to go to shape dividers, and I am going to add a wave brush. And what I wanna do is I wanna make this a white divider. So I'm gonna to go to global, and I'm gonna choose white. And the reason I'm doing that is because the section below is gonna be white for uh, you know any content that would be below this hero. And I want it to look like they're blending into each other. The next thing I'm gonna do is set the height on this divider to something like 400, uh, or I'm sorry, 40 rim, not 400 rim, something about 400 pixels. And then I'm gonna uh, vertically align this to the bottom. So you see it's kind of creating this overlap effect with our wave divider. Though I do wanna stretch my wave divider a little bit. I wanna to go to 150% on the width and then I wanna align it to the center. Maybe even 200% on the width. Maybe even 250% on the width. I, I, I want it to be very subtle. And then what I'm gonna to have to do is I'm gonna to have to increase the height of my divider. So this, this is looking pretty good here. All right, the next thing I want to do is we'll add the section below that just to give us some extra room down here where we can scroll and kind of look at, at, at what we're accomplishing. And now it's time to um, put in our photos. We're going to use like a surfing theme for this. So I'm going to click on this first photo right here, and I'm going to just edit the photo. So I'm going to choose this photo right here. I'm going to insert. And then I'm gonna choose the right-hand side photo, which is gonna be this photo right here. And then I'm gonna choose the middle photo, which is gonna be this photo right here. And then I'm gonna change the copy just so we can give some context to this little hero section that we've got going on now. So we'll say, learn how to surf from the most accomplished surfing duo in the United States, okay? I don't know who these people actually are. I'm just, I'm just making stuff up as we go. Uh, we can go ahead and make this a text base uh, dark color. And we'll make this text base ultra dark. And then I will also add our lead class to that. And I'm just gonna leave that as, as placeholder content. I think you guys pretty much get the point. Uh, but here's, here's some things about Image Group Echo that I wanna show you. Number one is it's built with CSS Grid. So it'll actually conform to anywhere you put it without breaking and without having to change any settings whatsoever. So check this out. If I make this container down here a grid, with a gap in it, and um, that's it, just a two column grid. And then I'm gonna add a block, 
And then let's say I wanted to drag image group echo. See, it's it looks good in a really wide format right here. When I drag it into this grid down here, you're gonna notice that it conforms to that new area. It, that We didn't need to change anything. The overlaps didn't get messed up. It's very, very easy to work with image group echo. I'm gonna hit command Z on that bring it back to where it was. Now check this out. Notice that I can't see this photo back here and I can't really see this photo back here. If I click on the class, um, you're gonna notice that these are already set to object fit cover. So they're not gonna warp your images at all. Um, they're also set to no caption. We need to use object fit cover so that we can use object position. However, we don't wanna do this on the class because that'll change the object position on all of these images. What I really wanna do here is make an ID level change because I only wanna affect this one singular image. So I'm gonna change at the ID level. This is gonna change to cover. So object fit cover, notice nothing changes, nothing happens because it was already object fit cover at the class level. But the difference is now I can change the object position at the ID, it'll only affect this one right here. So I can say like center right, and it's gonna move her over, it's gonna move the subject over and protect this side of the image so that I can always see that side of the image. On this one, I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. We're gonna go to cover and I'm gonna do center left. And now I can see her face so I'm able to position these images, even though they're being overlapped, I'm able to preserve different areas of the image for the viewer. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna add a border radius to all of these images. So now I'm gonna activate the class, and when I make this change to the border radius on the class, it's going to affect all three of these images. So I go to style border, border radius, and I'm gonna say radius of L, and then I'm gonna expand that to all sides, and you see we get the rounded corners on our images. Now I'm gonna go ahead and look at this on the front end, and we're gonna see, man, that was pretty quick. We were able to whip this up and we got the nice overlapping grid that we wanted. There's other things you can do here though. And I wanna show you some quality of life features and I wanna just further demonstrate how easy these frames are to work with. So again, at the ID level, I'm gonna deactivate the class because I only want this change to affect this image right here. I'm gonna go ahead and go to transform and I'm gonna rotate Z minus five degrees. I can get a little tilt on this one overlapping image. Notice nothing broke breaks, everything is still super clean. I'm gonna go ahead and save on that. And then what I wanna do is I wanna select image group echo, activate the class, and I wanna come down to the CSS box and I wanna take a look at how unique this is and how powerful it is and how easy it makes it for you to edit and manipulate what's going on in this image group. So you're gonna see right off the bat, we have some variables defined. And in the comments next to each variable, it tells you exactly what the variable does. And all you have to do is adjust these variable values. Now you can leave them alone. If you like what, what's going on here by default, you can absolutely leave these things alone. But if you wanna adjust the aspect ratio, if you wanna adjust the amount of overlap, okay? Let me take away, just for a second, let me take away this transform, just so we can be clear on what's happening here. See this amount of overlap, how the center image is a little bit taller than the other images around it? That is all controlled by aspect ratio. So if we go down to CSS, you're gonna see that there's an aspect width and an aspect height and then an overlap. So you're choosing the aspect ratio of the three images, and then you're choosing how much of an overlap there is as well. And what this actually does is just adds to the aspect ratio calculation to make sure that it overlaps without you having to choose, um, you know, your own aspect ratios for each image and, you know, manually create an overlap. We're kind of doing this for you through simple variables, which just makes it really, really easy for you. You can also change the alignment and you see here that your options are center, top, and end. So let's just take a look at that for a second. If I change alignment to top, look what happens. All three images align themselves to the top of the container. What if I choose end? All three images align themselves to the bottom of the container. And what if I leave it 
at center, then they're centered just like they were by default. So that's an example of how easy it is to manipulate these. You can also manipulate the box shadow that we have on the center image. It's really important for the center image to have a box shadow so it looks like it's popped off of the other images and there's a little bit of separation that's created there. But now let's take a look at this. What if these are not the aspect ratio you want? The images in the back are actually a square aspect ratio. But what if you wanted something like three by five? So you wanted them to be very tall. That, I, don't, I don't actually like that. Um, but if I wanted to be three by four, for example, that's still a bit tall. What if I want to do four by three as an example? Look how they all got shorter, but look how the, at the overlap is maintained as I adjust these values into anything that I want. Now, if I want more overlap independently, I can simply change this to 0.7 and look, I get more overlap. What if I did something extreme like 1.7? Look at the amount of overlap that I get. So these variables just make it so easy for you to make some changes, visually see what's going on. You don't have to come in here and d dig into all this complicated grid code. All you have to do is be able to change some variable values and you're looking at the changes as they happen. So it makes it very, very easy for you to dial in exactly what you want. Don't want any overlap? Look at this. Now we have no overlap whatsoever. So you can get exactly the amount of overlap that you're looking for. I hit save, I hit refresh. We take a look at, you know, I made a many, many, many different changes to this frame. So the question is, you know, what is gonna happen on mobile? Well, nothing is gonna happen. On, it's gonna look exactly the same across all different devices. And in an image group like this, because these are really just accent pieces. We don't feel that you need to stack the images or do anything else fancy. You can keep this exact same format through all breakpoints. And um, you know, it doesn't break. You can still see all the images. It's just fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. So that is an overgroup, uh, an overview of image group echo, brand new frame available to you right now in the frames library. Hope you love it.